All right, guys. Welcome. We have some people stringing in. Miss Laura, you you go by Laura, I'm guessing, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. So, um, because I, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that like I am a humongous fan of the Southern Sewing Circle series. Okay. It's, it's on my it's on my video for like most favorite series of all time. So I don't stalk you. I just like you a lot. So if you you know feel a That's little good. uncomfortable, it's okay. So uh, we have some people coming in saying hello. Sophia, she's from the UK. She is joining us. She says hello. And then Cozy Reads Mystery also um, has a Cozy Mystery channel that she just started. Okay. Um, the end of February. So very, very new. Excellent. So hello. I know I'm really excited about more people uh, getting into, into Cozies. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, a great genre for sure. It really, really is. So did you always want to be a writer? Absolutely. Um, I think I was I was 10 and I was at my friend's house and we were playing backup dancers and Barbies and all of that stuff. And it was raining and we got a little bit bored. And so she took out a stack of paper and some pencils and crayons and we proceeded to make a children's book. And by the time I went home, my book was called Kidney. Kidney Learns a Lesson. It was about a little brown bear I named Kidney. And, uh, <laughs> by the time I went home, I knew that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a writer and, and a mom. And that was my focus. So. It, you know, it's funny that there's something about writers and their first book being about this is really weird, but like body parts, <laughs> body parts yeah. or something along that line, because um, Ellie Alexander did an interview not too long ago on another channel, the bookish Bryants, who are also amazing. Um, but she said her first, and she was very young. It was never published, but it was something about a toe, one dead toe or, or something <laughs> like that. And then you said that I'm like, there's just something about yeah. authors. And, uh, that's so funny. So, cause when I was 10, I was trying to do the exact opposite of writing, like anything that was. <laughs> so that's really funny that, um, that you were you that know. could make an amusing book is some sort of a, a book put together with all of the writers who wanted to write as children, put all their little first stories into one book. It would be amusing. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would be actually really, really fun. So your Laura Bradford, yep. that I mean, well, of course, but I'm saying, so you have the Amish mystery series, which is really great. Thank you. And then um, the Emergency Dessert Squad, which I also really, really love and wish that there would be more of because I, I really enjoyed that series. <laughs> and then you have one that I has been on my PBR that I haven't read that to Toby, Toby Tobias. Toby Tobias, mystery, advertising mysteries. Yes. Yeah. So um, do you have new ones coming out in any of those? Do you want to? The Dessert Squad, I've given some thought to maybe doing one of those on my own. Um, but I do have a brand new cozy series starting in wow. December. So that's kind of where my focus is right now. Um, can you tell us anything about it? I mean, I know if you sure. can. Sure. It's called, it's the, a friend for hire mysteries. And it, the first book is called the plus one for murder. And this young woman, Emma, she, um, her, you know, her job is a travel agent. She's been working as a travel agent out of her home. But now that, it, you know, everybody's booking their own travel by themselves, there's less <laughs> need for her. But uh, one of the things that she does do uh, for, an old, for a friend is to meet this elderly woman for tea every week at 2 o'clock on Tuesdays. And this woman's an interesting character. And it was this woman who suggests to her that maybe she could, she could do that for a living, is be like a hired friend. And she balks at first, and this woman really pushes her at it and starts flooding her with her elderly friends who need a buddy. And, um, and then she's off and running with her business. So, of course, you know, there's dead bodies. Her first client dies, um, you know, in front of her face. So it's, uh, it's uh, going to be a good, going to be a good time. Oh, gosh, I'm really excited about that. So one of my buzzwords is like the elder. I love books that have like elderly characters in it. Like elderly, spunky, fiery. That's one of the reasons I love the so Southern Sewing Circle series because the the two older women, the sisters or cousins, Leona and Margaret Louise, are yes. two sisters. Yes, yes. You know, um, I, 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 those are those are big uh, draws for me, and that it that's such a unique premise. I'm loving that already. That sounds really, really good. It sure um, so the 
you're, you're tossing around the emergency dessert squad, which um, for people who don't know, and you're probably better explained than I am, but the, the main character, Winnie, has a bakery. She does. And then the the either the rent gets too high or she's kind of forced out of her space exactly mm -hmm. and she had inherited this uh, ambulance that she has no idea what to do with and so she like does the most i think that this one has like one of the most interesting premises out of this is so different so she basically uses this to start an emergency dessert squad and i love the names so people will call in and be like oh my husband has a job interview that he's really nervous about and they'll make a dessert for that, but they'll call it something that's really clever right. that I can't come up with off the top of my head. But, and then I was telling someone else, my favorite part is there's like, they serve it on a gurney. Yes. And then like there's an IV drip of icing. It's amazing. <laughs> I love it. I had so, a good time writing that series for sure, but uh, it didn't seem to find its audience. So oh. the publisher let it go. I guess a lot of people just didn't find it, but you know, I mean, by all means, tell everybody about it. Those three books are out there. And, you know, if I, I see that I have enough of an audience, I'll do one on my own. So, yeah, absolutely. And so um, Cozy Reads that I was telling about that started a channel, her and I on Saturday nights have been doing Cozy Mystery Chats. And last week we did one that we kind of entitled as far as topic like hidden gems, either they're independent or ones that aren't as well known because right. I feel like the whole genre could be considered a hidden gem, Absolutely. but within the genre, the, but with the people who know the genre, you know, Ellery Adams, you know, right. Ellie Alexander, there's a few others, but like, there's so many others that are like, I mean, I, those people are wonderful. Don't get me wrong. But there's so many others. And so we did like a four hour like chat and we just kept going. We're like, Oh, have you read this one? Have you read the <laughs> dessert one? Oh, have you read? And so it was a really, it was a really fun time. So now the Amish series, is there a possibility of more of those? Uh, not at this time. Um, I'm not, you know, it's a surprise because the sales were very, very good on that series. Um, so, I mean, it's always a possibility that that uh, minds will be changed. But um, I think the focus now is, is more on this other series. But if they ever come back and knock and say, hey, by the way, we want more, then I would be happy to deliver. <laughs> Well, I know that several people, um, so we started a book club that our first read is in April that we're doing on these Saturday night chats. Our first read, um, yeah, is April. And then we're doing something called cozy mystery knockout challenges. Basically we're taking like a subject and picking two books and then kind of putting them up against each other, almost like a March madness, like the basketball tournament in the brackets, just for fun. But there's, um, something called Amish in April okay. on YouTube. And I know a lot of people are planning on reading the um, Amish series by you for the Amish in April. That's fun. <laughs> yeah, I've already I've already read it, and I actually reread some of them because it'd been a long time right. since I'd read a couple of them. But I I love that series. But I do think my heart belongs with the Southern Sewing Circle. It's so good. I mean, like one of my favorites ever. I miss I miss those characters. I really do. I think about them often. I've often thought of a spinoff for one of the characters. So stay tuned as to whether or not that could potentially, I think Margaret Louise would be an amazing lead in the story, in a book. I would love that. Yeah. You know, I would, I would love that because again, the, the, the elderly character, quirky characters are like my, I would, <laughs> I would love that. Yeah. Um, so are any of your characters, any of your books without like, you know, giving anything away that like you don't want to say, are any of them based upon people, you know, Hmm. Well, there was there was one character in Let It Sew, which was the Christmas book that went with the, the Southern Sewing series. There was a Grinch in that in that um, story. <laughs> and she was fashioned after somebody who was a, a little bit of a Grinch or I would say a lot of bit of a Grinch. And um, yeah, so she she was somebody that a character was based on. Um, other than that, I tend to just they kind of just form in my head and I maybe take little pieces of people I've met, but she was really the, the character that was most, <laughs> most closely aligned with reality. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, Cheryl just came in. Cheryl reads like 
an incredible amount of cozies. Um, I think she had said that she read like she's read like over 800 cozies. Wow. Wow. Isn't that incredible? That uh, is I mean, incredible. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I aspire to be her. Um, Cozy said that's a great unique premise. She's talking about the emergency dessert squad. Um, she said she's excited to read that one. And then she said, I will be talking about the Amish mystery series for Amish in April. I know a bunch of people who are planning on that. Excellent. Excellent. Um, I know I'm doing the Amish in April and I think I have, one more that I'm going to reread because there's seven in this series and I reread. I, I don't know if I reread all of them. So I might read that one and then um, something else. But I'm really excited to do the Amish in April. It says, I do have the emergency dessert, dessert squad on my TBR. I'm sure I'll love it since I enjoy the Southern Sewing Circle so much. Yeah. Yeah. The, the dessert squads are fun. That first title, and we, we made all the titles were spoofed after famous thriller novels, like Claire in Present Danger, Silence of the Flans, Dial M for Moose. It was fun. I, I did enjoy that series, and I loved writing those characters. So, And there's some fun, quirky characters in that, too. The, the I can't think of them, but the people who always sit on the porch that live, like, yes. in the... Bridget I, and... Um, and I'm drawing Mr. Nelson. Yes. Thank you. I was going to say, I couldn't think of his name, but. Um, <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they were fun. They were fun to write. So, yeah. Stay tuned. Maybe, like I said, it, it, that one will likely find its way into a book in the future. So another one. Yes, we will be. I will be very excited. Good. Um, Romance Queen of Booktube says, hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> so. How do you kind of um, plan out your reading? Do you get an idea and run with it? Do you, so before you run with an idea, I'm assuming you kind of send it to whoever needs to be. And then do you outline? How do you go about your process? Um, my idea usually comes, especially for the series. I think like with the Sewing Circle series, it was kind of like, okay, which which of the ladies could use a story? Which one, you know, and what might be, something in their background that would would make for a fun mystery um and then i get my little story nugget i think reap what you sow um we had annabelle which was Margaret <laughs> leona's mother who had some quirks about her she showed back up and i thought i would work those into the story um i always know who's who's oh, going to yeah. die and i know who did it but it's especially with a long-running series like that was the characters just kind of take over and I may have a plan in place, but very often they kind of hijack the plan during the writing process and do their own thing. Um, when I started that series, I always thought that it was going to be a different person was going to be the lead in each, in each book. Uh -huh. But Leona in particular was one who just kind of elbowed her way to the front of almost all of those books. She was not going to be denied. <laughs> so so she, she had a bigger part than intended, as did Margaret Louise. But I love them. They were real. So Absolutely. Those, those are the, those two twins. I, I couldn't remember exactly the relation, but I knew that they, you know, yeah. are are one of the big draws to the to the book for me. And I think that Tori is a really smart character. Which is also why I love her because I, I mean, I, I love cozy mysteries. So basically all I read, I mean, I do read some romance, but, but really I'm a cozy mystery person. I tell my husband, I'm a love them or leave them kind of gal or kill them. So watch. No, <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Kind of. No. Um, but one of the things that I do in cozy mysteries that, that I kind of, eh, um, you know, draws me away from that particular book is when the heroine, whoever it is, the amateur sleuth right. makes really dumb decisions. I'm not dumb, but like puts themselves in really dangerous situations without any thought right. or any, you know, and I felt like Tori was like really smart. Yeah. Um, she yeah. you know, still solved the crime, but I don't think there was any point where I was like, Nobody would actually run into a building when people are firing a gun. You know what I mean? Or whatever. Like, whereas in sometimes, right, right. unfortunately, I'm like, oh, why would you write it? That? And I don't think I ever felt that way. I thought she was really, really intelligent in her, in her sleuthing and the way that she uh, went about it. Right. And, um, yeah, so I, I really, I, 
she's just a character I really and I love Sweetbriar, the town that it's set in just um do is that a real town and do you how do you like for your setting building are all these places places you know did you go and visit how do you do that um well the heavenly in the in the Amish series is based on a lot of the towns in Lancaster I do spend a lot of time there before each book when I was writing that um Sweetbriar was just kind of you know it created I built on it in my own head um, same thing with the Emergency Dessert Squad. Um, the Toby Tobias books are set in an area called the Central West End of St. Louis. That's based on a real area. Um, yeah, it's kind of created the kind of place that I might want to live. I've lived yeah. in a lot of places, so yeah. That is really funny. Did you live in St. Louis? I did for 17 years. So um, wh where I lived in Illinois was 10 minutes from St. Louis, Missouri. I lived in um, Alton. Okay, yeah, yeah. And so know, my author. husband... Mystery author Lynn Cahoon, Lynn Cahoon is also my best bud, lives in Alton. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So she she lives in Alton. So her and I, I was talking about that. I had already moved to Florida. I moved in 2019, but okay. um, has been working in downtown St. Louis and all that. So that's really cool. And then it's funny that, so I grew up in central yeah. Illinois in an Amish community. Oh, wow. Um, I grew up in Arthur Arcola area of okay. Illinois. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but it's a there's a large Amish community there. So interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know. Um, pretty, pretty outlandish. I don't know how that happened, but um, Cheryl said the Southern sewing circle is on my list of series. I want to finish this year. Cheryl's doing like a 20 get serious mm -hmm. series, series, like where she's trying to figure finish so many series okay. because I don't know if you're this way, if you read a lot, but I probably have, 50 series going at any one time because, because I'm like, Oh, Laura Bradford wrote another book. Oh, Nancy Coco. Oh. And <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah. So I think a lot it is fun when one's out and you can follow it all the way through. I had a, one of my readers just recently did that with the sewing circle. She'd never heard of it before. A lot. That's the fun thing is there's a lot of people out there when all of a sudden like, Oh, I didn't know that was you. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's me. So this one particular woman, she plowed through the entire series over the last couple of months. So it was she got to really see how the characters, you know, develop and grow. So that was fun. That is awesome. And I and I love that sometimes I don't know, like I'm like pin names, like, you know, I'm like, oh wait, that person's also that person. Yeah. I love that person. Yeah. Because sometimes I haven't read like the other the other books because I didn't even know the connection. And so um, you know, when you know you like an author's writing style, it's always fun to find out that they write under, Something you know, else. Yeah. right. Yeah. Cozy yeah. said, Cheryl, it's on my list to start. I will never catch up with my 40 series list now. I know. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> oh. I love that the characters <laughs> took over. Yeah, I think that that's, I think that's, what probably another reason why a lot of your that if, if if you write that way another reason why I'm drawn to your writing because although I love the mystery it's very secondary to me I the thing that I love about Cozy's more than anything is the characters in the setting I like going back to the same place and seeing what they're up to and what right. their animal is doing this week and right. what you know um and and this and the mystery comes along with it. And if it's great, that's even more, you know, right. but it's usually the mundane stuff that I that I love more than anything. Probably too, because I never figure out the mystery. So I've just kind of like <laughs> And as you get to feel like you know these people. When I would when I was writing the sewing series, I was also writing the Amish mysteries for some of it. I did some romance books. I was writing a bunch of things all at the same time. And it was always good when I got back to a, one of the longer series, like the Amish books or the sewing series, because it was like getting sitting back down with old friends and they made me laugh. I mean, there was times where they would make me giggle while I was writing and it's like, whoa, <laughs> where did that come from? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, do you read a lot of cozy mysteries yourself? I read some. Um, I was doing a lot of reading at the gym before the pandemic ended or before the pandemic started, I wish it ended. And I would read on my Kindle on my, uh, on the elliptical. And that was my time to read. And since they closed my gym and, uh, 
I haven't been able to go back. I haven't been finding the time to take to myself as much as I would like to. So I read kind of across genres. I like um, thrillers. I like suspense. I like women's fiction. I like cozy. So I'm just, I kind of read across. Yeah. I would kill myself if I tried to read on an elliptical. <laughs> That would be a disaster waiting to happen. They're like, no, ma'am, you can't do that. <laughs> it was the only way I could stay on the thing was with a book. The one time I took my Kindle and the battery, you know, it wasn't charged when I got there. I literally got right back off the machine and went home. <laughs> like, forget it. I can't do this. I would want to. I'm just saying it would end in disaster. Yeah. It would end in like an accident waiting to happen, you know, and then. The liability they just wouldn't be up for because yeah. I guarantee I'd hurt myself. So um, when you do read cozies, are you hard to fool? Um, like in terms I of- I like, sometimes, but it's kind of like it is with me when I'm watching a movie. You start to recognize things. Uh, my kids hate to watch TV shows and movies with me <laughs> because I'll be like, well, this is, you know, this is what's going to happen. And like, mom, stop. <laughs> so it's just, it's not that the writing isn't good. It's just that you start to kind of, this is what I might do, or you start to recognize things, but yeah, I, I still can get fooled at times. Yeah. Um, you know, that's funny because almost everybody I ask kind of says that they're like over, you know, because maybe just because they've written so much, but they're, but they're like, particularly their spouses, their kids are like, the same thing. They're like shows. They're always like, I already know. And they're like, no, stop. That's good. Yeah. Cheryl um, said cozy. Sometimes I feel like I'm never going to get to the bottom of Me too, Cheryl. Lisa says hi. I'm looking forward to starting Laura's Amish. I've got the first book sitting on my shelf from the library. Sweet. It's really good. Good. Really enjoy that series. Yeah, that's why I love cooking mystery. I think the characters are friends. Me too. So, oh, yeah, no, okay. So, um, I always ask this, so you may have seen it, but I just think it's a fun question. Let's knock on wood, but if you were murdered, mm -hmm. I know it's kind of like, where are we going? Um, who would you want to investigate your crime? Like book, movie, who, I mean, it wouldn't matter, but what, what detective would you want to? sort things out. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, wow. Huh. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to stick with, I'm going to stick with Margaret Louise. I really am. Even though she was a side character, that woman was fierce and ferocious. And, um, yeah, and, and who doesn't tell a really loving grandma type everything, you know? You know, you might right. spill your guts to her more than more than you would somebody else or somebody. Yeah, I, I think that's who I'm going to go with. Yep. Excellent. I like it. I like it. Um, I always say Columbo just because I think that um, there's just something about him being so bumbly and it always seems like he has no clue and everybody kind of thinks he has no clue, but he's so smart that I just, I, you know, something about that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know, I do think there's an advantage to the elderly sleuth because you think of him as a grandma at that point, you're like, Oh, it's a, the sweet old lady. You got to tell her what's going on. Interesting. Yeah. Although, you know, and I always think about like the small towns, like Jessica Fletcher. I, I love murder. She wrote, mm -hmm. But I always think, man, if just Fletcher walked into a room that I was in, I'm out. Like just out Absolutely. of abundance of caution. Like because somebody's going down. Yeah. Even if it, yeah, I don't want any part of it because it could be. Being, out. I remember driving across a bridge in Cincinnati from Kentucky into Cincinnati at one point, and as I'm driving, I saw Jim Cantori on the side of the bridge from the Weather Channel, and I could not get off that bridge fast enough because I figured <laughs> something's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Oh so gosh. it's like that. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. It's kind of like, it, I mean, it's, that's a pretty clear sign, yeah. right? <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> yep. One of your own characters. I love that. Um, be back in a minute. The dog's got to go out. We get it, Cheryl. Take the dogs out. <laughs> um, so 
this is another question I kind of always ask because I think it's fun. So if they, you know, it's starting to happen more. If, if Hallmark called you, I say Hallmark cause you know, they're kind of like, if Hallmark cards you and said, Hey, we really want to turn the Southern sewing circle into a series TV series or movie. I don't know, which I think would be amazing by the way, who would you want to play? The, the main characters, like not only Tori, but like even maybe the older sisters. Oh, wow. See, that's hard. Because it is. I, I mean, that to me, that's the hardest part about thinking that is because in my mind, Margaret Louise is a real person and Louis Leona is a real, they're all real people. So to pick somebody to play them, I always find that find that hard. Now, don't get me wrong. I would love if that phone call came because my mother actually thinks that would make a good series too, of course. But um, yeah, I, um, wow. I don't know. What, what, do you, what do you think with some of the older characters? Uh, well, you know, I think that the, th the people that I can think of are, are old enough that I don't know that they could pull it off anymore. Because I was thinking like Jessica Lange. Right. Oh, you know, yeah. um, yes. But like, I oh, don't. Oh, and that one, um, she was in Steel Magnolias, the, the crotchety one. She would be a wonderful um, Dottie. Remember the, the library in the uh, fuller job? Who is that? Um, not Shirley McLean. Yes. It? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think she would have made a great Dottie. Yep. So interesting. I do think on the Amish series, I've often thought about that one. I think Jacob, the detective, I would love to see, um, oh my gosh. Uh, he was in the movie 27 Dresses. I'm drawing a complete blank on his name. Very cute. Um, he was in 27 Dresses. He was in the movie uh, Enchanted. Okay. It's not Ryan, not Ryan Gosling, no. Um, I've seen the movie. Yeah, he was the dark-haired guy. He was the reporter that that uh, had a thing for um, the main character in Twenty Seven Dresses. Uh, I adore him, and I cannot somebody, believe my name. The name is just completely escaping me. Somebody can look it up in the chat for us. Yes, the guy in Twenty Seven yeah. Dresses, because I got to get it in my head. Yeah, but um, you know, I really think that the that the Southern Sewing Circle series would make a great would make a great show. Hallmark, if you're listening. <laughs> yes. yes if you're listening that would be lovely they seem that to be doing cool. a lot of it yeah the yeah. you know um and even and even i mean maybe not as much the cozy side but even like netflix is picking up a lot of books and that are series and making right. it into shows because they did that with uh the robin carr virgin river series right, right. which yeah. was which was great i I don't know if you if you read any of those, but they were really good. Yeah. There's this, you know, I think that's the fun thing. That's what I like in a book, whether no matter what genre I read, whether it's cozy or a thriller, I just I want to identify. I want to feel like I know the characters. To me, I mean, the plot's great and the and whatever the the suspense or the journey or whatever, but it can be the greatest plot in the world if I don't care about the characters. I don't care about the book. And that's just, you know, that's the way it is for me as a reader. And I think that's also the way it is for me as a writer. I want to care about these characters. So doesn't I, mean everybody's going to agree with characters that I like, but I got to like them if I'm going to spend that kind of time with them. I I 100% agree. I'm much more character and setting type of, of person yeah. than 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 any other part of a story, than the plot. I mean, I want the plot to be, you know, thought out right, wrong. Right. but it's very secondary to me it's it, it's particularly a cozy I think yeah. for me um so when you when you like sell a, a book series do you sell so many at a time and then you don't know what's going to happen and you just kind of go with the flow is that kind of it's usually at least in at least you know, up at the last couple of years, it was usually three books at a time. Um, like the sewing circle, as an example, was three books as a time at a time. But two weeks after the very first book came out, they ordered up a four, five, and six because it was it really found its audience. Um, 
there was also less cozies. So I would say, yeah, I would say less cozies then too. Um, and that one just kept going three at a time, three at a time, three at a time. And then they just, you know, decided that 12, maybe that had run its course. But I do think that those characters inside that series could, could do their own thing. I do too. Um, the Amish series, same thing. It was three at a time and then three at a time. And then they ordered up this last one, the Christmas book. Um, but I kind of had a feeling that it was a possibility that that might be it. So I tried to give everybody an ending point in that book that they would be satisfied with, that I could easily keep going if if I needed to or if I had the ability to. But I'm okay with where it is. So same thing with the last sewing circle. I did know that one was ending. So I was able to give them a fun little, you know, mm -hmm. send off. I agree. Um, and I, and I like that. I mean, especially if you know, it's wrapping up, it's kind of like with the TV show to, if they know they're wrapping up, I, I, you know, I want some sort of finality to it right. at least to where I feel, even if there's a, you know, left open to something happening, I feel like some sort of wrap up of some right. kind. I feel right. like, and I think that definitely happened. I feel like in the Southern sewing circle theories for me. Yeah. Um, so switching over to the dessert squad. Okay. What do you think Winnie's favorite dessert would be? <sighs> you know, we never really saw Winnie eating her own desserts very much. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Huh. Mr. Nelson, ever, but you never, it, I just think that's interesting. Yep. Yeah, she just, I just had so much fun creating that series and make and holding that theme across. <laughs> um, I loved coming up with the dessert names. I had a couple of friends that I'd call on and we would just start just shooting off names and just brainstorm. And, and I would giggle my way through that because oh, it was absolutely. funny. Um, but I think the nice, the thing I liked most about Winnie, I liked the way she was, and you'll see almost all of my books have elderly characters in them somewhere. Um, that's the case in the Toby Tobias books. That's oh. the case in the Dessert Squad, the Sewing mm -hmm. Circle, obviously, mm -hmm. the Amish. It's going to be the case with this new series as well. Um, I just think that they're they're smart. You can learn a lot from them. Sometimes they have no filter, which gives <laughs> some, some humor. Um, Absolutely. And they're so easily discounted by society in general. And sometimes that's premature. And I kind of like to show that, too. And I like to have... I just, I don't know. I just always feel like I, they need a place in my books. So I always give them a place in my books. I absolutely love that. And I 100% agree. My grandmother, who I was saying, she lives in um, about three miles from where we built. She, um, she's going to be, she wouldn't want me to tell you, but she's going to be 91. Um, but, she, <laughs> but um, in April, but um, she she said that she got to lose her filter at 80. That's what she says to people. If people are like taken back by anything she says, she says, I got to lose my filter at 80. Yeah. Um, yeah. And she'll say something like, well, now I'm cute again. When you're young, you're cute. You can say anything you want. Past 80, apparently you're cute again. Okay, good. Well, well, I look forward to that. <laughs> that's what I think. I'm like, okay, so I just have to hit 80. All right. But, and I, and I agree that they're, I mean, of course, unfortunately, I think they're, they're, they're counted out and written off as, right. you know, what you're saying. And I, I yeah. think that that's a, a good place to put someone. I just, I, I love the characters when there's an elderly character. Right. Characters are the best part and what keep me reading. I agree. Cozy. That's awesome. Yeah, I agree. I DNF'd a book recently because I just didn't care um, the main characters in the story. I, I, I really ag agree with that. And then, yeah. um, do you listen to audiobooks at all? Do you do audiobooks? I don't. I was one of those weird kids in school. I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm an, I'm a visual learner, so I need to see it. I can't hear. I'm one of the, if somebody reads a story to me, my mind starts disappearing somewhere else. So I don't do audiobooks. Um, some of my books are in audio and mm. today the ones that are, I have not listened to them yet because I don't know that I want to hear someone else's voice in saying my character's words. To me, that's just a little bit, I don't know, a little unsettling. So 
I'm just going to hope that the narrators are good and, uh, you know. <laughs> they are. Good. Good. Um, so in the, I, I've been having a lot of um, deteriorating vision issues in the last few years, unfortunately. I don't know what that'll be kind of, but anyways, um, so I moved a lot towards almost all where I was before. I would never listen to an audio book. Right. Not because I just, because a lot like you, maybe I, I just would, um, I don't know. I, and I feel like because I hadn't listened to very many, you really have to find one that has a good narrator. That's why I asked if you do, because right. um, the narrator can make or break a story. And I think as an author, I just wonder how frustrating that would be because like the Amish series, the narrator is really good. But I think as I, that's how I re listened to those because I read them years ago and that was way before I was doing audiobooks. So I definitely read them at that time. Right. But when I, Re came back to him because I knew I was going to be talking to you. I did them all on audio. The narrator was great, but I think, man, I know I love this series, but if the narrator was bad, I, you know, and I think, I wonder if that'd be frustrating for, for an author because right. there are times I when. I think it would be hard. I think, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm grabbing my plug to plug myself in here. Um, I would think that it would be very hard. I think it's hard for people when they're made into movies too, and they do something different with the character. You know, to this day, um, Lee Child always hears people commenting about what a mistake it was to have Tom Cruise play the Reacher character. But <laughs> you know what? When Hollywood comes knocking and they say, we're going to make your thing into a movie and, you know, Tom Cruise wants to do it. I mean, what's he going to do? Say no. <laughs> no. <laughs> they were just talking about that last night on a live chat. Um, the book is Bryce and Cozy Reads Mystery. That's so funny that you mentioned that. Did you ever, have you ever read anything by Jodi Picoult? I have not. I have her books, but I have not. She had a, she had a book called My Sister's Keeper. Okay. That they made into a movie. And I mean, they changed ev to the point where I'm like, why would you even pay for the rights to call it that? And even right. say it's one of her books. Right. Like, my friend was like, you're going to get kicked out of the theater. Cause I was like, at the end, I was like yelling. I was like, That's not what happened. I mean. Yeah. They I've done that. There was a book, uh, a Michael Connelly book. I think it was called bloodlines. Absolutely loved the book, but in the movie, they made the best friend character who I adored. They made him the killer in the movie. And I just went insane. I'm like, this was horrible. So that would be hard. That yeah. Would be hard. And I actually um, went and saw Jodi Picoult speak in Chicago when I still lived in Illinois. And she gave like a 45, she did like a speech and then she gave like, did like a question and answer period. Right. And there, like everybody in the audience had their hand raised. And she said, now, before I ask any questions, if you're going to ask me about the movie, My Sister's Keeper, this is what I'm going to say about it. It's kind of like a kid. Once you give it up for adoption, you don't get to follow it through and tell somebody how they're going to raise your child or make your movie. And I was like, you know, and like half the hands were down. It was so funny. They're like, this is so <laughs> different. But I thought, you know, that's a really smart way of putting it because she's like, basically, I didn't have a choice once I, yep, you know, once I signed it. I'm just glad that like the Amish series, they just now got picked up. The first three books are on audio. They weren't until, you know, uh, earlier this year. So hopefully they'll pick up the rest of them. Um, but I'm just glad that, that it opens those books up to other people, maybe who don't, who, like you said, have a vision problems and they want to listen on audio or um, my books that they come out in large print. You know, I, mm -hmm. I like knowing that they're open to, you know, to a bigger audience. Yeah. Yeah. I just think that for, for me, um, and particularly when the narrator tries to do, like, if you can't do an accent, just don't try to do it because when you try to do it and you can't, it's, it's, it's worse to me. Or particularly, this is one thing that's a real turnoff. When a woman tries to do a man's voice, they never do it well. So I would rather, if they really want a man's voice, either hire a second person to, to do it Right. Or don't do it at all and right. just kind of, you know, somehow because it's it's so hard to listen to. It's just eye rolling annoying. So I just right. um, wondered how that would be for you. So you have this new series and it's the first book's coming out in December. December and 7th. Mm -hmm. And what is the first one? I know it's the Friendship Companion, but what is it? It's, the it's, a, 
It's called A Friend for Hire Mysteries. That's the series name. And the book is called A Plus One for Murder. Plus, so, do you have the cover or is it I not out yet? I have the cover. I'm waiting for the go ahead to share it. So we're, we're close. Um, close. And then hopefully it'll go up for pre-order in the next, within the next couple of weeks. So I'm, ex I'm excited about it. It was fun to start a new cast of characters. And I will say for my sewing circle fans, um, there's some fun little nuggets in the first book that, that they will recognize in this one. So just fun little moments. Let's just say that Dottie, the elderly woman that she has the tea with once a week that gets her into this business, she is an avid cozy mystery reader. And she's always wanted to sleuth things herself. So, you know, she she brings up some so she brings up some of the sewing circle characters and uh, wants to kind of channel channel herself through them. So it's fun. It's just it, I love doing that for readers who read all of my yeah. series. Um, I think in the Amish series was it Amish. Oh no, I think it was did Tori and Milo in the Southern Sewing Circle series. They reference a trip to Heavenly Pennsylvania and staying at Aunt Diane's bed and breakfast. And it just I love to do that, you know, just just a quick little thing that yeah. kind of ties all the worlds together. Yeah. And um I talked with Kay George last week and she was saying that um she's they've kind of been playing like an Easter egg thing with um she writes, you know, she belongs to like a sisters in crime kind of organization. Right. And she was saying that you'll see those, you know, little nuggets, just like you're saying, like one little thing is in reference to, you know, a Laura yeah. Bradford book or something yeah. like that. I thought that was really, really fun. It is fun. It is fun. Um, you know, I just I know what what I love, some of the things I love most is when you get letters from a reader that says that your book helped them through a tough time or, or they want to know, you know, why did you stop this series or whatever? It's just, it's nice to know that people are passionate about what you write and that we're not all in just some vacuum where we write this stuff, put it out in the world. I mean, it's actually going to people and they're enjoying it and it's making them, making their life happier for a little while. And I like that. Oh. Absolutely. And, and I'll tell you, this might seem silly, but like, I, I, I'm not trying to say anything where I get a phone call later, but like, sometimes when you, I, I have relatives, let's just, I'll say it that way. I have relatives, not my mother-in-law, because she really does watch this. I don't mean, I'm not talking about my mother-in-law, um, but I have relatives that, um, I mean, not that I don't get along with them. I don't mean that at all, but we have, like, sometimes we don't have the best communication, but the person I'm thinking of also really likes cozy mysteries. So it's seriously something that we can have fun talking about. And there's no chance that we're probably going to float into uncharted territory that would be this, you know, right. And I think that's really fun. You know, I mean, being able to, Oh, did you finish the, you know, Southern right. going through the series or blah, blah, blah. What'd you think of, you know, and it gives us um, a way to come together and kind of, you know, talk about, about things. Um, I think that that's, I think that's really fun. So the new one, what, where does that take place? A plus one, a plus one for murder takes place in a town called Sweet Falls, Tennessee. Um, small town, you know, the little town green, the, the yeah. little, my little coffee shops, all that kind of stuff. So Love it's, it. it's fun. Um, I'm writing the second book right now, which will be out in summer of 22. And for me, I was talking about this with Lynn the other day. Um, for me as a writer, no I always find the second book in the series to be the hardest to write. Um, I think it's because you have the excitement of the first book and you introduce all these neat characters. And then you want to make sure that they fit into the second book, yet you're still, you know, it's a new story. And you don't want to leave somebody out that you're going to find out that people love. And it's just, I always find that book to be, I don't know, just the tougher one. So it's slow going right now. I could see that because it's even like where you take them. Like, cause they're still growing as who we're going to get to know them as. And I could see it being like, Oh, I thought she would do this with that character. And she went over here and, yep. you know, so I, you Absolutely. know, I could, I can totally see that because then I feel like once they're established, you know, they grow still, but it's not like as much of a, you know, still getting to know them and stuff. So I would, I think that that, you know, would be, yeah. and I've had, 
you know, books where I've definitely had books where I thought the first book was average and then they got better. Like, you know, I mean, the second book and third, but I've also read a book where I'm like, oh my gosh, the first book was a five star and I am counting down the days I'm pre-ordering. And then that, you know, second book, not that it's bad, but it's just, you know, so I think, you know, I think I've I've seen that myself as a reader sometimes. And I just knowing how hard that second book is to write, I always give the third book a shot too, because sometimes it all just comes together for that one, you know? So, yeah. yeah. I wonder if I, it, and I mean, this would be like way off, but I wonder if like you plotted the second and third book at the same time, if that would, because I mean, like if yeah. you plotted the second book, but you also plotted the third book and knowing where they were going to go from there, it might feel a little more. And that's the hard thing is you don't know if you're going to be now. They seem to be doing more like two book contracts at a time. So you don't even know if you're getting a third book. So that's the hard part, you know, (laughs) because then you know that if you put something out there and you never get to resolve it, readers get really upset with that. And sometimes they, they don't understand that very often writers don't know that a series isn't getting continued until after they've written the most recent book. And they're just as frustrated that they didn't get to tie something up. So it's, it's a, it's a tough walk sometimes. Yeah. I was shocked to learn about what all goes into not writing a book. I mean, I understand how hard that process is. I always tell people when I first graduated college, you know, you've been in school since you were what, like four, you know, right. pretty much, you know, and if you go on, like I went straight on to university and, you know, by the time I was finished, like I really had a hard time not going to school. Like my first right. semester, my first semester being done, I, I had my job and I was working full time, but it was weird not to have a class. So I took a, like a community enrichment class where you're not taking it for a degree. You're not getting, you're not getting a credit. You're not even getting a grade. It's for fun. Like you could do bird watching or cake decorating. I just chose to take creative writing and the gentleman that was teaching it, I thought I'd be really good at it because I read so much. Right. And the gentleman teaching it was a retired um, man, just the nicest gentleman. And I think that he couldn't have been nicer about it, but I'm pretty sure if he could have failed me or told me to give up, he, he (laughs) all He always said it. I, it is hard work, but so I always knew that of course, Yeah. but I didn't realize the whole, like people will be like, Oh yeah, I'm contracted right now to write a book in 2024. I'm like, wait, what? Or maybe not that far out, but, and then the process of it, you know, how many times it goes through different people and you know, the, the process of even picking a book cover and the title, and yeah. and then how different it can be across publishers, right? I don't oh, know, yeah. you know, um, if you've had to change publishers. But Kay George was saying that like she's worked for a publisher that was more traditional, and then she worked for one that like gave her the names of the main characters, gave her you know kind of a synopsis, but then let her go. But I'm like, oh, I've never heard, you know so right. interesting how that yeah. process works. It's crazy. I mean, they're even just the covers. I mean, I've been all of my Burke, my um, ones with Penguin. I've been very lucky. My covers have been fabulous. And I actually, the artist who did the Sewing Circle and the Amish series is also doing the new series. So I'm like, yeah. Yay! yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hopefully that means some good luck because both those series did really well. Um, but my very, my very, very, very first book ever published was with a small press out of Maryland called Hilliard and Harris. And the books that I wrote for them, the Jenkins and Burns mysteries got picked up by Worldwide Mystery, um, which was their, uh, like however many mysteries in your mailbox for a certain amount of money, like a book club thing. Mm -hmm. But with the Hilliard and Harris version, um, I made, you know, I, I, it took me five years to write that first book because I was doing it while my little one was crawling around on the floor and I'd write in like 20 minute increments. So when you're when it takes you that long to write a book and it's your first one i had this cover in my mind i knew exactly how i wanted it to look and it was i had it down to you know the the shadows that i wanted so i suggested this to them and um it, it's set at the beach uh, the jersey shore and i wanted uh, oh, I love a body laying face down in the sand and then maybe a shadow lurking. And then I wanted the amusement here in the background. That's that's what I wanted. So so, so the day that the cover is supposed to come and, and it came by mail, um, I went out to the mail to get it. I knew it was coming and there was nothing in our mailbox at all. Nothing, which was very unusual. 
Next day, go out to the mailbox. Again, nothing in the mail at all. Ugh. Like an hour later, the, the mail carrier knocks on the door to tell us that on Friday, the day before, that his mail truck had caught fire and everything, <laughs> everything that was in the mail oh. truck was either burned or, or um, you know, impacted by the fire, uh, the water that he used oh my. The, the fire. So Monday, he tells us that on Monday, he's going to bring by what they were able to salvage. And in comes this envelope, and it's got singe marks all the way around <laughs> it, and the, the sign oh. from the post office on it that says, you know, duty, you know, circumstances beyond our control. And I open up this <laughs> envelope, so excited to see my cover singed and all, and it is pink and it has a beach chair and a green sun <laughs> that was my cover and i literally was looking around like okay somebody is waiting and taping this it has to be this could not possibly be real like you were pumped it was exactly but unfortunately i was not pumped it was real <laughs> is that the the cover they went with Yes, if you search on Amazon for Jury of One, that was its original title, you will see the first cover. And it was, it, yeah, it was the stuff of nightmares. Um, and then, and then Worldwide Mystery did their version of the cover. And I saw that, and it was on a thumbnail on the computer the first time I saw it. And all I saw was a hand and it looked like the hamburger helper hand. I'm like, what, what's going on? <laughs> but actually it was a good cover because it was the hands and it was a, it was based around a fortune teller and the lines. So it was actually really good. But when the original publisher folded, I got the rights back. I put it out myself on, um, on ebook and we changed the names to, to bring them all in line with each other and to make the covers more uniform. So jury of one is now deadly readings. But that 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 um, book is always my example of huh, the nightmare that a cover can be. So basically, every cover I've ever had since then, I have been grateful beyond belief. <laughs> they can do whatever as long as they, you know, it's not pink and doesn't have a green side. <laughs> yeah, I would say, and and you've gotten very low because the covers are all awesome. Yeah. They really, really yeah. are. That um, said, that Hillier and Harris, that was that was my publisher that that gave me my first chance and I will be forever grateful so yeah yeah um I always try to pitch the idea you kind of said something I mean I know you were saying about it being in the background but I'm trying to get somebody uh -huh. I want no royalties no rights no I'm just kidding I, I mean I'm kidding about it. I want somebody to write an amusement park or traveling carnival cozy mystery it would be interesting and there's so many ways to kill to kill somebody. And I just, you know, like the main character could be like somebody who does the the different princesses or dresses up in Absolutely. a different way. Yeah, Carnage would make great characters. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. You're I'm right. I'm I really <laughs> I mean there's there's it feels like there's a cozy mystery for everything, but that's the one that I'm like, oh my gosh, that would be so amazing. <laughs> The first book, you kill him in the tunnel of love. Second book in a cotton candy bat. I mean, just saying. <laughs> yes, death by cotton candy. I can see the title now. <laughs> yeah, and that could have a totally cozy cover. Yeah, it would. It would, and it could be pink, and it fit. <laughs> I like that. Yes, very, very cool. Hmm. <laughs> Cozy said, I also saw a book called The Amish Sweet Shop on Hoopla, and you were listed as the author. Is that short story? It is. They are short stories, and um, but that's more towards the romantic side. Not like crazy romance. It's Amish-based, so, you know, it's all pretty, you know, mellow. But yeah. they are more towards rom um, romance. Oh, yeah, my, I have a lot, a lot of things, a lot of mysteries, women's fiction, romance. I'm just kind of... I have a story and my brain wants to tell it and it tells it however it thinks it's going to work best. There you go. So do you write under any other names besides the Laura Bradford and the Elizabeth Lynn Casey? Nope. Just Laura okay. Bradford and Elizabeth Lynn Casey. That was just that one series because that was known as an in-house series, um, which means that Penguin it was, they came looking for somebody to write a series set in the South with a sewing circle. Um, I, you know, created the characters and took them everywhere, but they're the ones that had the idea. 
and which is why I could never go and continue those books on my own because I don't own the rights to that series. I had to write it under a pen name because if for some reason, um, you know, they decided they wanted somebody else to come in and write it at some point, or if I didn't want to write it anymore, they could have tracked someone else in to write. But I had it going the whole 12 books. So yeah, it's my series and they let me tell people it's me. So it's not a big secret. <laughs> yeah. So when you chose the name, is, is there any significance to, I was at like the pen name that you chose. Uh, the pen name I chose was um, Elizabeth is my oldest daughter's middle name. Lynn is my youngest daughter's middle name and Casey was my grandparents' name. So, Got it. and I will say, I, I love that because it was a nod to everybody. But every mm -hmm. time I had to sign that book with those three names, I always used to think, why did I do three names? <laughs> <laughs> I think that because I hyphenated my, my name yeah. when I got married. And at the time, you know, that's what I wanted to do. And now it's been 15 years. And I'm, when I write it, I'm like, oh, God, what was I thinking? <laughs> you know? Yep. Yep. Exactly. So. Same exact thing. Yeah. Same exact thing. I'm always looking for large print versions. Me too, Cheryl. Even a large print though, until I get my eyes taken care of, I've been having trouble. It's the, when I look at it long is my problem. Now, do you do, do you do okay with eBooks? Cause you can enlarge the print on those or does the light bother you? That's what, that's what it's just staring at this, the screen or the page that, 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 that really bothers me. Um, so Cheryl, I love the Kindle e-readers. You can adjust the font size and the brightness. Yes. Yeah. Cheryl, that that is really helpful with the with the f f particularly the font size, um, and you can change the brightness, like you were talking about, and, and all that. Cheryl, yes, if you can afford it, I recommend the Kindle Oasis. But the Kindle Paperweight can do the same thing. It's much cheaper. The Oasis just has a few more features. Price ranges. We should buddy read. It in December, January. I think she's talking about um, the new book. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Let's do that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that would be so much fun. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very excited about this new series. I think it's gonna be, uh, gonna be a lot of fun. So. Yeah. So plus one for murder for January 2022 book club. I love it. <laughs> Seriously, I love it. So this month we're, um, we haven't announced for May, but we know what it is. But for, um, for April, we're doing the dark and stormy murder for Julia Buckley. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but um, yes, I think we should totally, because you know, Cozy, I'm going to be interested in reading the, the, the plus for one. Good. I'm really, yeah. That's awesome. Five payments. I always give a series two or three books before I give up unless I can't stand the first one. Yeah. yeah. Me, too. Me too. It must be so hard to let characters go when you don't get renewed for more books. It is. It is. It's very hard. You miss them. You know, uh -huh. because they become like family. I mean, I know it sounds silly, but they really do. So it, it's, it's hard, but um, you know, I can, I can imagine what they're doing sometimes. So in my, my website newsletter at Christmas time this year, I decided to have Tori write a Christmas letter and I included that in my newsletter and it was a quick little update on what everybody was doing. So that was, that was kind of fun. I love that. Um, I, you know, I think about that too, about like, like what happens to, to characters when they're done, because I like you, I mean, like the characters of the, are the biggest draw point. And I'm always like, well, I wonder what they'd be doing now. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Um, there's a book blogger, uh, Drew's book musings. Yes. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite things she does is those character interviews. Yes. yes. That is like my favorite thing ever because it is so much fun. So actually I just, um, the in my last video I was talking about her and put her link but if you guys don't know in the chat so it's called Drew's Book Musing she does a um, cozy mystery book blog and she was my shout out Friday um, for book blogs but she does she does a day in the life and so many really really creative things but one of the things she does is a character interview so like instead of uh, interviewing Laura she would interview the main character in the book so like Tori would have her own interview and it's always the same questions and I love the way 
Does the author write it or does she? Because it's so creative. Oh, I would imagine she, I don't know that I've ever done an interview. I've done the day in the life with her a few times. Okay. I would imagine that she sends the, the questions to the author and then the author answers them as the main character, which is, you know, it it's just goes so to show cool. how, how these characters live inside the writers, you know? Yeah, because Before it'll be writers. like, you know, it's always the same. The questions are always the same, but like they always have their own flair in the answer. It's like, um, the first question is always like, what is your age? Right. And it'd be like, she'll have some characters that, you know, are just flat out answer. And then she'll be, and then other characters will be like, you never ask a lady her age. Or it's just like, and it's always like really yeah. um, fitting to their character, right? Because it's like what you think that character would answer. And I absolutely love those. And I think awesome. that she should do like some sort of follow up with those, like where if a character, if a series ends, like try it, like follow up with the author if they're allowed to by rights. Oh, that would be fun. And that do like fun. a, yeah, you know, what they're doing now. I just think that that would be so much fun. Where are they now? Exactly. Yeah. that's fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I need glasses. Oh, me too. <laughs> yes, the cozy covers. Oh, they're the best. They're the but you know what? One of I remember I will never forget, probably because of that nightmare with the the pink cover, <laughs> when I finally broke in with Berkeley with So Deadly with the sewing circle ladies. Um the first time I saw that cover, because it's like a little where's Waldo, all the story hints that are in that cover, you know, the the little house on the prairie bonnet, the the coffee stain on the book. I mean, it was so well done. It was so obvious the artist read that book. And I, I, my editor, my first editor with that series, she ended up um, leaving the company and I got a new editor who I adore as well. But before the other one left, she gave me a print of the cover without the words on it, without the title, without my name. It was literally just the artist rendering. And I, I have that hanging in my room. I love that. Because yeah. that's, that was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. And it is amazing all the different Easter egg kind of things that they can put in those covers. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, because there are certain series I know, like, I, I didn't even notice until, you know how sometimes you see something or you watch something over and over and then like the 10th time watching it. Right. Like, I can tell you how many times I've seen Friends. And then all of a sudden I'll be watching a random Friends. I'm like, yeah. how did I miss that? Well, yeah. The, sometimes the covers are that way because there's certain series that I didn't notice until like 12 in that every single cover had a skull in it somewhere, but it was like hidden. And so right. then I had to like go back and like, <laughs> like try to find, and there's yeah. like one in every, it's yeah, that's just fun. all the little nuances that they can include, but it's really the, the coziness of the cover that, that gets me. That uh, and the titles. I think the titles are fun. I always used to want to, sit in on a title meeting at Berkeley when they were, you know, bad. Cause I'm sure there was a lot of laughter and a lot of wine involved with, <laughs> with those, those meetings. So. Absolutely. I, I, I really want that job just to like create punny titles. Like that would be, I love, love, love the punny titles and the, I don't even know if punny is the word, but the punnier, the better. Yeah. If it's not a word I want it to be. Yeah. So you know, um, but I also am the person who loves Laffy Taffy jokes. I um, <laughs> do um, like group therapy with children and they're like, like right now I'm doing six to 11 okay. and I tell them like a Laffy Taffy joke, like every day. And they're yeah. like, oh, Miss Tiffany, like even the six year olds roll their eyes at me. I'm like, that's funny. Like, <laughs> and I think that I think the titles are the same way. Yeah. Like I'll yeah. laugh at the titles out loud and I'll show my husband and he's just like, oh, <laughs> Sometimes I've gotten to title my own books very often. And then there's been a few where they've changed it. Um, like a, it was a Amish mystery number five. I said, I suggested caps like they wear on their head. K-A-P-P-S caps and robbers. I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> but they said that that would be the marketing team shot it down because they said that it might be too confusing if someone went into a store and I and said, I want cops and robbers that they wouldn't be able to find it correctly. So that's when they came up with a turn for the worse, which <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> all know, right. But all the books are play on words at that point, you know, like crime rib 
could be, you know, they're taking you to a recipe, you know? I I mean, I I still thought Captain Roberts was brilliant. Yeah, (laughs) I agree. I think that you should put put it out there again, because that is pretty funny. I love them. I I can giggle at the the titles all day. And that is like before I knew what cozy mysteries were or really much about them. It was seriously walking through the bookstore and seeing a cover that it made me stop because of the color in it. You know, it was always, it looks very, you know, right. Cartoony as opposed to maybe a picture. And I like that. And then I read the title, you know, uh, dial in for boots. And I'm like, that's hilarious. (laughs) Or, you know, whatever. I mean, silence of the flans. That is amazing. I like that one. I like that. And that one actually showed up in some magazine at some point for funny, punny titles. I'm like, yeah, that was, that was a good one. That was a good one. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I, when I had to do the Christmas book for the sewing circle, I pitched so deadly. And my daughter, who was probably like nine at, to- at the time in the back seat, was like, Mom, you're not really going to call it so deadly, are you? I'm like, I think it's clever. <laughs> no, not so deadly. Um, the Christmas one, let it sew. That was the one that she's like, let it sew. I was like, yes, that's clever. <laughs> I I love it. That is clever. I mean, I I I love all the the punny titles, the play on words. I mean, yeah. you know, when and when somebody can carry it into the series, like there's a um, a year round Christmas um, cozy mystery series yes. by Delaney. Yes. And, like she always has like really punny titles. Yeah. The first one's like called God Rest Ye Murdered Gentlemen. <laughs> but like series takes place in Rudolph, New York. The main character's named Mary, but it's spelled like Merry Christmas. Nice. Her sisters are named Eve and Carol, and it just keeps going. And I'm like, this That's is fun. Fun. That's I'm like, this is this is amazing. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Yeah. I like when an author just really has fun with it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Lisa's <What>? back. <laughs> oh, no, but that was a great story. Laura, do you get to choose all the ti- Oh, all the titles. Um, okay. So I would say mm, a lot of them I've chosen, um, but not definitely not all of them. Um, Silence of the Flans, I don't think, actually, I may have come up with that one. Um, the so the Sewing Circle ones, sometimes I got those, sometimes I didn't. Uh, the Amish ones were tricky. I did not come up with a salted pretzel. I will happily admit that one. When I saw that on my computer, when the editor said, how about a salted pretzel for the second book? I'm like, a salted pretzel? And it took me a while, and I think I had to see it to get the pun. I'm like, a salted pretzel, what are they doing? And then I'm like, oh, uh, salted pretzel. I get yeah. it now. <laughs> took me a minute. <laughs> yeah, they're, they, I mean, whoever does that, I mean, seriously, they are very good at, at coming up with, with something. I feel like if anyone can make that series unique, Tiffany and Soul, absolutely. Oh, thank and, you. I mean, if you're, if you're, if you have, icing coming out of an IV bag. You can do anything at that point. Like, yeah. I mean, absolutely. I agree. That was fun. Not the tunnel of love. That would be funny. See, I know. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Death on the merry-go-round. See, I'm telling absolutely. you. Absolutely. You know, haunted, you know, what's that fun house? Yes. This could be something. Yes. Yeah. The the world. Yeah. There's all sorts of things you could do. I'm telling you. Yeah, I think you should write it. I think you should go, oh, back, no, no, no. go back to that, that class and try again, you know, try, try again. I, I, I have come to the, uh, the, the realization that I am meant to be the reader and y'all are meant to be the writer. It, it, that's where I belong. That's where I enjoy. Well, we are yeah. grateful for you. <laughs> so. Um, you know, but yes, I would, I really would love to, to, to see that. I think that would be great. Oh my God, I wonder what, if that happens, if um, other authors take over a series and we don't know it, like a ghost. Um, I suppose it could have, well, I know like some of the biggest ones is Carolyn Keene and Nancy Drew. There was multiple Carolyn Keens, you know, um, 
The Babysitter Club was written by many different authors. Oh, I didn't know that. I only knew the Ann M. Martin, but I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of them that that happens with. Whether or not that happens with the cozies, no, I don't think very. I would think more likely than not, if an author said they wanted to stop writing an in-house series, they would just close it down. Unless for some reason it was just a blockbuster and they kept going. But I don't really know if that happens. So. Yeah. There's a couple series that I've wondered about that are older, you know, that have went really far. But um, I really did not know that about the Base Air Club. I was so obsessed with those when I was like middle grade age. Like, I mean, and until a few years ago, I still had all of them in like. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And my husband's like, okay. He's like, you're almost 40 and we don't have kids. He's like, so he's like, what are we doing with these? So I gave them to a friend who had a little daughter because right. I just felt like they had to go somewhere. Absolutely. But, man, I was obsessed with those. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Lisa said, are there more Amish mysteries coming? I know. And I, I hate to say this, Lisa, because I know how what a big supporter of that series you were at this time. It has not been picked back up again, uh, despite incredible sales, actually, particularly for this last book, Killer Carol. Um, but you know what? I do believe that readers can can change things. So, you know, if enough people write and say, hey, what happened to that series? Who knows? Maybe. You never know. There are a lot of series that I absolutely loved that... Um, only went like three books. And I'm like, how was I, how? Because I mean, they were just so good. Like seriously. I think sometimes that it just, people don't find it. It's like you said that there's so many different cozies coming out that you're like, oh, well this person's book came out and this person's books came out. And I think, you know, when they have a new allotment every month of new books coming mm -hmm. out, people can only read so many. And then a new allotment comes out. And I think unfortunately, some books don't get picked up or maybe a reader thinks I'll go back and get that. And when they go back to get it, a new crop is out. And so I think, I mean, it really, unfortunately all comes down to sales, you know, and that that's the hard part. So, you know, and, and, and sometimes I've been guilty of it, not even knowing it because like what I'm saying is like, because I um, on my channel do a spotlighting cozy series right. where like I look at a different theme within cozies and talk about what series are out there. So like right now I'm working through animal series. So any series that it, the focus is animals, right? And I've done like um, culinary and different themes. Okay. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm, um, I love that series. I think I've read them all. And then I'm like, wait, there's 15 of them? I've only yeah. read eight. Like, Absolutely. Because, yep. because I, again, I'm, I'm like a small dog. I can say this because I'm talking about myself. Like my intention span is, you know how dogs like, oh, a piece of grass. Oh, a feather. Oh, I'm like that with books. <laughs> no joke. And I made myself a band that I would not start any new series. And I've justified it in so many different ways. It's crazy. I'm like, but it's March Mystery Madness. And oh, it's, you know. Right, right. I, whatever that, you know, and it can be the most arbitrary thing in the world. I'm like, oh, it's Arbor Day. I have to be able to start a new series. Like, yeah. It's hard. I mean, you know, series like my Toby Tobias series, I don't know if it's because it was more towards digital. It just people didn't seem to find it. And I think that might be one of my better, one of my best, strongest series. The characters in there are a lot of fun, but it just never seemed to find its audience, you know? And I'll go and I'll look at the reviews on Goodreads and they're, str I mean, the reviews are strong for that series. But I don't know. I don't know why it didn't seem to find, you know, whereas the dessert squad, you know, I look back at that, not the best reviews on that series, even though there's people like you who absolutely adored it. You know, a lot of people love that series, but there seem to be people who, for whatever reason, just didn't. And I don't I don't know. You know, it's all just a. a I don't know. It's, it's hard. It's hard to know what works and what doesn't work. So it is. And you know, it's interesting how one series can, can do so well. Like I hadn't heard, I've read seriously every book in the Southern circle. I'd read all the, the three emergency dessert squad and I'd read all, but I think one of the Amish series or two of the Amish series, I think I was on five when I started over after I talked with you. Right. And I'd never heard of the Toby Tobias. 
Yeah. And, and so like, maybe, yeah. maybe just, and I'm like, for someone who knows all that's surprising, you know, right. but, um, it, I mean, I, it's not like, I guess I, I really pay attention much to, I don't know. So, yeah, well, I think it also some 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 authors are really good about getting out there on all Facebook all over. I mean, you know, Lisa Kelly will tell you I tend to be a little bit more quiet. Um, I do my page and and I mention my books, but I, I it's kind of like the characters that I write where they're you feel like you get to know them as a person. I'm kind of more about sharing fun things about life and and just normal conversations with my readers than I am buy this book, buy this book. So I'm you know probably hurt myself that way, but I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know we talked about, about, uh, like whether you read cozies and that sort of thing. You said you read across genres and stuff, but you think you would make a good sleuth yourself? Huh, good question. <laughs> I'm a very, I'm very observant. Um, I'm the one who's standing in a room and I'm going to notice the person in the background who makes a funny expression based on something somebody said um, when nobody else is looking at that person. So I'm, I'm very observant. I think I have a pretty good read on people most of the time. Uh, so I actually think I would make a good sleuth, but I'm a little squeamish. So I don't know. <laughs> Just tell me what happened. Don't make yes. me see anything. <laughs> yeah. Just tell me what the pictures will look like. <laughs> drop me in the drop me in the middle of a dessert, a dessert cozy, and I'll be good because I like to eat chocolate. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And it's so funny because obviously, you know, a, a big thing with culinary cozy is the recipes. Right. And they sound amazing, but like I I mean I cook because I have to eat. But that's kind of basically it. <laughs> um, and so I always make the joke. I'm like, okay, so these recipes sound delicious. So somebody that cooks, let me know whether they really are. <laughs> because, you know. Yeah. Um, now I might make the cocktails in the Haley Palace. You can, you can just imagine it. You know, you can imagine how delicious they might be. The hot flush, hot flash fudge sundaes. Yeah. That they had, you know, and um yeah, the last what was it? Something about the straw that the straw. Yeah, I have to go back and reread the dessert squad because I did have fun with those those names. They, they I was trying to describe those last week when I was talking about the series, and I was like, they're fitting for whatever the event is, but they were like a pun or a play on words too. They were so good. They were so good. I'm signing up to your newsletter. Yay! Okay. And her um. The website is in the description for when this shows up. So you can go straight to um, Laura's website and, sure. and sign you. up. Yeah. Lisa said she would um, love to, but they're planned for now. Mm. I'm sorry. Maybe that was a while. I'm not sure, Cozy, what, what you're referring to. But, Cozy, I've also cried when I finished the series. Some characters are just like family. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Where are they now? We need a where that would be so much fun. I haven't finished any series yet. So that hasn't happened to me. I'm trying to read my favorite series slowly so I don't have to say goodbye yet. I do that too sometimes. <laughs> I'll like try to, and I know Cozy uh, has talked about this, try to like spread it out. But then I get to the point where I also just can't hold out any longer. Yeah. I do it. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're also doing a live. Sophia, it's so hard to end a series. Yeah. No, I have to wait. Sir, Caps and Robbers is great. I agree. No. <laughs> oh my gosh! See another. I love Caps and Robbers. Yes. Gisela. Hi, Gisela. Hi. Okay. That's okay, Gisela. Someone else is writing the Center for Hire series. Don't for them anymore. That's no Spencer for Hire. No, mine is a friend for Hire. Okay. Oh, maybe, oh, maybe whatever that series is was a pen name series and someone else is writing. That might be it. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Well, even, even the murder she wrote, that's been written by different people along the way. So I love that they say Jessica Fletcher in the yeah. uh, with the author, like Donald yeah. Dane and Jessica Fletcher. I always think that's funny. 
Um, I interviewed uh, Lee Hollis not too long ago. Okay. And I interviewed um, Rick, which yes. was the brother, which was really funny because when he first emailed me back, I told my husband, I don't know who this man is, but he keeps, and, but, and then finally he put that in parentheses because I emailed him. You had to email through their website. So it wasn't right. like he was sending any direct email. So when it came in, it just said my site. It didn't say the name. And then they were like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't know who this man is. I felt, you know, and then they, eventually I got it, but yeah. um, he was on and um, he was talking about how I forgot where I was going. Oh, the Jessica Fletcher series. Um, he wrote on um, the Golden Girls, Lee oh, Hollis. Wow. Okay. So, and his office was in between Sean Cassidy and Angela Lansbury. Oh. <laughs> and I thought that was the most interesting story. I was like, that is yeah. crazy. Wow. And wow. that, I, yeah, that's, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Hmm. Cozy Reads Mystery, just saw your answer. Thank you. Okay. It's a scramble to get all the new titles or new series and hoping you haven't missed any. Yeah. 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 I would highly recommend though, if anybody's got an e-reader to check out the, the advertising one, the Toby Tobias series, cause they are, they're funny, funny. If you need a good laugh. Absolutely. Facebook has messed with my notifications. I see posts from about 10 to 12 people of the same pages. I don't mean to ignore people. Gotcha. I love to bake, but cook, just eat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was always amazingly hungry while I was writing the emergency dessert squad. <laughs> I bet because some of the, some of the stuff sound, that's why I wanted to ask you about like what would Winnie, eat? because I feel like Mr. Nelson and the one that he always um, heart, like went back and forth with. Yeah. Oh, Bridget. Yes. Okay. I feel like they were always willing to try her, yeah. her desserts sometimes, yeah. you know, but you never really saw Winnie eat she her didn't. stuff. She would just taste test a little bit, you know, but for the most part, yeah, she just really, I don't, she was just creative, you know? And, and what I loved about that series was just the way that it started. You know, you open that book opens up a Claire and present danger with her in the attorney's office hearing that she's been left in the will of her friend she's been left this vintage ambulance and a cat who hates her so it was just it was fun it was a fun jumping off point and i just i did enjoy writing those characters so the more i talk about it maybe i really will write a fourth one for my you know stick it out there myself absolutely because i i'm telling you it probably has one of the like most unique premises ever like uh an ambulance that they've turned into a mobile bakery it was fine I mean, you know what? and then, then the dessert squad emergency dessert squad is such a you know fitting name because it's an ambulance and the gurney i mean the whole bit the icing and the funny thing is the reason i came up with that cozy idea was um, I was a Girl Scout leader for like eight years. And one of the girls in my group was kind of having a hard time finding herself once she got into a high school and what she wanted to do with her life, but she loved to bake. So she talked about wanting to do food trucks and stuff. And after she'd come for a visit, she went back home. And one day I had that idea. I'm like, how cool would that be? So I called her up and I'm like, Emily, I've got the, the best idea for a food truck. And you make it like an ambulance, an emergency dessert squad. And I could just hear the teenage, yeah, okay, uh-huh. <laughs> so I got off the phone, and I'm like, but wait a minute, that is a cozy mystery. <laughs> yeah. So it ended up doing well for me anyway. Oh, my gosh. And I dedicated the first book to Emily. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, people are saying um, they're going to look up Tobias. Excellent. Death and Advertising is the first one. So. Death and Advertising. Yeah. Yep. Lots of people. Toby's bias. See, yeah, that's how I found them. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Sean Cassidy music. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I know. I the two run, 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 run. <laughs> <laughs> Which that was really funny because when, when Lee Hollis was talking about it, he was saying that, I mean, Rick, he was saying that um, he would play the music like the partridge family or whatever and he did because he really liked him but i guess Sean Cassidy was always thought he was kind of mocking him and he was like no i really 
really like the music. He was like 24 at the time. And it was just really interesting. But I thought, wow, to be next, an office next to Jessica Fletcher, I know with Angela Lansbury, but I mean, like, yeah, you know, I mean, I would move away from Cat Cove, but I might feel comfortable being in you know, an yeah. store to her, you know. Wow. Well, hmm. You have unique ideas for cozy days, the emergency des dessert squad, and a friend for hire. Yeah, the friend for hire sounds so much fun. If we do the book club in December, well, either way, you should, you should come back in November. Absolutely. And talk about your the the book right before it comes out. But um, I, you know, we we probably will do it as a book club book because we only want to do first in a series for the okay. book club. And that way, if other people haven't, because okay. Cozy and I have read a lot. But, you know, starting in the middle of a series for a book club is hard because right. nobody's on the same book. But if you. Right. right. But, yeah, this will be brand new and that that would be great. So. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I'm telling you, it's right up my alley. So I'm really, really excited about it. Good, good, good. And like I said, there's elderly people in that one, too. At least one. So, and she's, she's a little bit of a stitch, so you'll like her. <laughs> yeah. Well, that sounds like it's kind of the premise is something that would be right up yeah. my, uh, you know, her finding book club for January because December is Christmas themed. Yeah. That's okay. January works. January yes, works. absolutely. She is an icon. Mm -hmm. She is an icon. Um, so before we go, I don't want to keep feeling. Does anybody have any questions? And then, um, do you know when your cover drop will be for the I'm for hire? I'm hoping since we're now getting within, what are we now? December, January, February, March. We're coming up on the nine month window. I would like to think they're going to give me the go ahead in the next couple of weeks, but I don't know yet. <laughs> and it'll be in your newsletter eventually yeah. when it does. Yes. My newsletter. I'm sure I'll put it on my Facebook page. So, and if I ever get with Instagram and get a little bit better at that, maybe I'll put it on Instagram too. So. I don't have Instagram, but if you ever get it on, if you ever get on Twitter, only because Twitter. I'm see, not good with Twitter. Yeah. Well, so without going into big D don't, because I have no idea why, but Facebook hates me. Oh. I, I, like, I really don't know, but um, like they blocked an account I had that I had never, ever, ever seriously made a single post, not even like hi, Laura post. Right. <laughs> And, um, like 15 years ago, and that's the only time I ever had an account. And I had it for like what oh, my husband's standing for like a week anyways. So when I started my book two channel, I was like, okay, I'll make another Facebook because I just never get on Facebook. And my husband's brother, who's really good at tech, made me one, didn't even use the same name, used my married name, dropped right. my hyphen and everything worked out. And two weeks later, they blocked that account too. They, did he use the same email address to sign up? Probably. Yeah, I don't know. Probably well, yeah. No, no, they didn't, did they? I don't know. Anyway, wow. so I just was like, you know what? It's not that way. And they have no customer service, like for phone. It's all like trying to. And so anyways, but I've signed up for your newsletter. So either way, I'll still get it. <laughs> Excellent. We'll get Thank it. you. Yeah. So thanks everyone for coming and please think about coming back in, um, you know, like October ish. November. I, I would love to. So okay. You name the date and time and I'll be there. <laughs> okay. I would love, love, love that. All right. Well, thanks everyone for coming and thanks Laura. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye.